I know I can't be the only one wondering if the Democrats are going to roll out Dr. Fauci this weekend or even Monday morning to denounce President Trump and endorse Joe Biden in the ultimate October surprise. We certainly can't put anything past these people, and Dr. Fauci has admitted on CNN that he's been a close family friend of the Cuomo's since Fredo was young. Right. I want to talk about something else that nobody knows. Uh, why do I know what uh, Tony Fauci thinks? I've known him a lot of my life. Well, first of all, because you're a friend. I mean, uh, you know, we have a professional relationship, but you're a friend. I've known you since, I hate to say it, since you were almost a kid. If Dr. Fauci endorsing Joe Biden isn't the Democrats' October surprise, then it looks like they're completely empty-handed. Perhaps they were getting nervous and released what they had early, hoping that it would have an effect. It sure seems that fake story in The Atlantic about President Trump supposedly calling our troops losers and suckers was designed to be an October surprise. But a dozen people with first-hand knowledge of the matter immediately came forward and pointed out that it was fake. Or maybe they thought people would actually care when the Trump staffer who was part of the resistance that wrote that New York Times op-ed two years ago would finally reveal himself. In our 2020 lead, Anonymous revealed. After two years, we now know who wrote the 2018 New York Times op-ed critical of President Trump, claiming there was a resistance inside the administration. It is Miles Taylor, the former chief of staff to Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. Moments ago, the White House responded to the revelation, calling Taylor a low-level, disgruntled former staffer. Let's discuss. <laughs> I'll discuss, Jake. Nobody had ever heard of this guy, and I already forgot his name. That's how unimportant he is. Not even Fredo was impressed, because when the op-ed first came out, the liberal media were excited, hoping that it was Kellyanne Conway or Sarah Huckabee Sanders, or at least somebody that the American people had heard of. But it turned out to be this guy, <laughs> whatever his name is. All right. Uh, first, what matters most, uh, certainly to me. You lied to us, Miles. You were asked in August if you were anonymous here on CNN with Anderson Cooper, and you said no. Now, why should CNN keep you on the payroll after lying like that? Chris, it's a great question, and I'll just give you the blunt truth. Oh, what a surprise. After he probably got fired from the administration, he became a CNN contributor. And as you know, I watch CNN so that you don't have to, but I think this is the first time I've ever seen him on air. So the Democrats are recycling the same old lies, like this reminder that the content farm, now this posted, claiming that most Americans got a smaller tax refund last year thanks to President Trump. I guess that's half true, but as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story is that the reason for that is because people got less money taken out of their paycheck each week from the taxes, thanks to President Trump's tax cuts, and so then the government didn't hold on to their money and then give it back to them at the end of the year. Any CPA or anyone with a brain should have known that, but as you know, liberals don't have brains. So they're bracing their audience for a possible Trump victory by claiming that he's trying to steal the election again. Never before in modern presidential politics has a candidate been so reliant on wide-scale efforts to depress the vote as Trump. Every politician knows they would do better if those supporting their opponent did not turn out to vote. But Donald Trump is mounting an all-out assault on democracy in a last-ditch effort to ensure that that's the case. The president trying to steal the election is where we start this hour with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Please, God, let President Trump win so that we can watch the biggest media meltdown in the history of television. They're getting worried that despite the pandemic, the economy has recovered quite well. Yes, the economy is growing at 7.4%. The number looks great. It's a historic number. Uh, it comes on the heels of a lot of pain in the past and some pain to come. But still, bottom lining this... For the election that everybody's looking at five days from now, um, Donald Trump's going to be able to run around and say, this last quarter, the economy grew at a record rate, the, the, the highest rate ever, period, end of sentence. Thanks for that report, Joe. I had no idea that facts occasionally slip out on MSNBC. Things aren't going any better over at CNN. Jim Acosta wrote in his diary, quote, 
This happens at just about every Trump rally. I'll show you the video in just a second. I've covered five presidential campaigns long enough to know this isn't normal. Sometimes I'll scan the crowd, but not for the folks who are chanting, but for the people who look back at me silently, letting me know that they know it's wrong. Jim, they're looking at you in awe that you think you're an actual journalist. It never gets old, which is why you need to vote on Tuesday so we can get four more years of this fun. Meanwhile, Don Lemon had said that he had to cut off ties with any friends of his who watch Fox News or support President Trump. I have had, it's so sad, and I don't know if after this I will ever be able to go back and be friends with those people because at a certain point you just say they're too far gone and I gotta let them go and if they're willing to come back and if they're willing to um, live in, in reality, then I would welcome them with open arms, but I can't do it, I can't do it anymore. I don't know why anybody would be friends with you, Don, but I'm sure they're better off now without you. The Democrats are also getting quite upset that so many black people are supporting President Trump, including famous ones like rapper Lil Wayne, who recently had a meeting with President Trump and then tweeted his endorsement. You see, Democrats still think that they own black people, like they did before the Civil War. And speaking of other unpleasant surprises for the Democrats, a Department of Justice official has confirmed that the FBI has an open criminal investigation into Hunter Biden for money laundering. <laughs> what a surprise. A Justice Department official confirmed to Sinclair that back in 2019, the FBI opened up a criminal investigation into Hunter Biden and his associates that is focused on allegations of money laundering and remains open and active today. It's up to you to get the word out, though, because the entire liberal media industrial complex is refusing to report on a single negative story about old Joe. It's also up to you to get out and vote if you haven't already, because if Joe Biden wins, then we're going to be stuck with President Harris. There's no way that Biden will make it to the 2022 midterms. They'll 25th Amendment him out of there and install her as the new puppet. Not to mention, he'll issue a mandatory lockdown. The kids won't be able to go back to school. You won't be able to go back to work. Countless small businesses will go bankrupt. They're going to give citizenship to the 20 million illegal aliens that are here. And so much more. So if you haven't already, be sure to get out and vote like your country depends on it because it literally does. And this weekend is your last chance to get my limited edition Beware of Democrats shirt. And also this weekend and through election day, I'm going to give 20% off anything from my online store if you use the promo code VOTE at the checkout. So get yourself an I Love Global Warming shirt. It contains facts and opinions, some may find offensive shirt, or any of my awesome designs. All available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Enter the promo code VOTE at the checkout for 20% off and check them out.